And this is my preferred braiding pattern. We started here and we went around right in a small circular motion. So I'm gonna protect Zena's here by using the wrap strip. You could get these from your local beauty supplies and two, so we could remove it for video purposes because I feel like it will give you a more clearer visual as to what I'm doing. So I'm gonna be using the 28 pieces from the Janet collection. And this is the glue that I'm gonna be using. It's the super hair bond glue. You could also get these from a local beauty supply store. I'm gonna also be using the eight inches straight hair. And this is also from the Janet collection. So I'm gonna start going straight across. Once I get to the sideburns, I'm gonna go completely across in a straight line. I don't swing my track like this because I don't want it to be too heavy on her face and then we're gonna have to go in with a lot of detailing, um, cutting to get it off or to get it to look as natural. So I'll try my best to keep it as straight as possible. So pay attention, I'm just letting it sit right here and literally just placing it. No stretch. Just placing it. So this is the space that I have between each track. Okay, so now that I'm at the front, I'm gonna be going across in a straight motion. As you can see, I pre-glued it so you could see that. So I'm gonna be putting my track straight across and then once I get to this one, I'm gonna start slanting it a little bit. This is where I want my crown to sit. So I want my closure piece to be sitting right here. So I'm gonna keep going around in a circular motion with the hair until I get to this point.
So here we are. Remember the point that I made, it's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my own closure piece so it fits perfectly within that point. So I'll use that to make sure that it, you know, gets a little extra tacky. Do not mind my nails. Don't be talking about me. I'm gonna roll it. I already have, have an, um, an eye for the level that I'm trying to go, but if you don't know, you could keep putting it in there. It should fit perfectly in that socket. So this is what you should have. So as you can see, you can see the glue. And if you feel like you can, you could use more hair, separate. But this is exactly what it should look like. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more glue right here. You don't have to put too much because remember you already put it right there and that's already um, drying. So it's tacky enough to hold on to it. And then you wanna go ahead and place your closure piece in here. See that? Nice and seamless. And we're gonna go, go ahead and pick out these gray hair that we'll have throughout the hair. So let's secure our closure by drawing it in. gonna go ahead and separate the straight hair from the 28 pieces and I'm gonna cut this section first if you're new to cutting I recommend you use this you could get this from your local beauty supply store and you would use this section And remember I told you about the way I cut, I do my tracks laying downward. If I had swing it, it would be way too much out here and too much cutting for me to do, or it would just probably end up looking wiggy. My cut isn't even anywhere as yet, and you could see it's already forming. So you see I'm lifting the hair, I'm lifting the hair to show you guys exactly what to do if you're going ahead with these shears so you don't go too close to the weft. You won't be cutting too much hair off because if you do that, you'll have to go in and replace those tracks. This is where a lot of detailing comes in for me because she already has her natural hairline, which is nice and soft, and I don't want
gonna go ahead with my thinning chair and remove the weight from behind our ears. Now we're gonna cut our bands. And the bands is completely dependent on how your client wears her hair. So you have some people who want this bang sitting right at the tip of their eyelashes and you'll have people want it to sit right above their eyebrows. So it dep completely depends on your client, how she wears her hair. And I'm going ahead and I'm point cutting because I don't want that sharp um, Chinese bang. I want it to have more flexibility, more movement. And that's why I'm doing the point cutting. I'm gonna um, cut the entire bang before I move around her perimeter. Joining the side to the front of the bag. So you should be looking just like this. The, the most I'm gonna use is from Jew Poppin. I use this one, I use the Nairobi. So whatever you do have that you already like, you could go ahead and use. I like this one because it gives it a little hold. And it's also workable. So I just wanna have my sideburns, you know, a little wispy doing something other than just sitting there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create something. Like I said, she already has hair that goes down this way. So I wanted to be able to mimic what she already has going on. And for here as well. If she didn't already have, um, you know, here laying there, I'd probably cut it down way more and then taper it with my Baby Bliss liner. But we're not gonna do that. I'm just trying to soften it and have it waved just like the hair lays on the back of her neck. This step is not essential. You could skip this step. And this is also completely dependent on the client that you're working with and exactly how they're here lay. 
if you have somebody that already has a shaved hair line, you could literally just thin it out more and shave the hair, the back of the hair. So I could tame this a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of mousse on top. Nothing crazy. You could go ahead and mold this down more as well if you need to. going to be using the same wrap paper securing that securing her sideburns i'm going to tire and put it under the dryer like i said no more than 10 15 minutes okay you cut it Areas that I feel like is a little bit heavy, I'm gonna go ahead and take out some. I'm gonna spread this evenly through the hair. We just had the blow dryer drop, so I'm pretty sure you heard the noise in there. So let me not act like you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and spread the nourish and shine evenly using it as my curl base. We're just lightly bumping this because we don't want any curls to be defined. And I'm doing, so for the upper part, I'm going to curl it this way. And on the other side, I'm going to curl it going that way.
look at this. A solid bone. But you look good. You shouldn't see me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh -uh. Woo. So you see this movement, and you could also take it down if we don't want all that drama. Take it down. So this is the final results of our mushroom cut. mushroom heavy bang whatever your choice is to call it this is the look <laughs>